Yeah, here we are. Friday. Uh, January sometime. January 19th? Maybe. Maybe the 19th. Whatever Friday comes at around January 19th or 20th. Anyhow, here we are in, in 2022, right? The um, Rick was here for a while this week, and he helped out quite a bit. He was here last week, too. You saw him in a couple of things. But what we did was get all this put back into the car. The rear end is in and assembled. Even fixed, even uh, have the brakes hooked up, like brake lines and stuff on it. So it's got all done up. Then uh, in the cab here, I've got the, uh, I, I put in a new electrical box, like a new uh, fuse box with what are there's 12 circuits there or something like that 12 24 24 24 pins so 12 circuits and so that this part here is the old holder and I've modified it to hold that new fuse box on there I've got a cover for it and that will be like way better because the uh, hmm, the old one was uh, when I did take it apart I find it over here somewhere I've got it, I'll, I'll save it for posterity, right over here, yeah. When I did take it apart, there was, some of these wires just sort of fell out of there, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't very, wasn't in very good shape, it was getting sad. That wheel is on there, hmm, uh, that took a while, that was today's. So, between the rear end, and the electrical stuff, and the wheel on here, and the car even ran a couple of times, cool. So, Anyhow, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Keep sticking around and you'll see, well, see how it all got done. Or most of it. Whatever I didn't forget to turn the camera on for. And uh, see you next week. Yeah, here we are. I'm in the house now. And a uh, hmm, little bit of channel news for you. Somehow, over this last week, it uh, clicked over a million views. So since 2000 and 10 or 11 I've been doing this stuff and got up to about a million views now so cool and that's all thanks to you so carry on bye for now yeah so here we are back at it the uh, last night when I left I had to start tightening up on these bolts that hold the carburetors on they're not tight yet but over the evening things have changed outside here considerably so there's Quite a bit of snow and a little bit of a, a little bit of a nor'easter happened here and it's still happening. There's no point getting the tractor out yet until such time as uh, it's not going to be a nor'easter anymore. So I'll carry on with this for a little bit and uh, we'll get the tractor out after a while and make a snow blowing video, hey? Nothing like it. So tighten up those things on there. Start working on some fuel lines, maybe finishing getting that, finish getting that uh, fuel pump tied down or done up, finish the uh, wiring for it. There's a black wire that comes in right there that Rick put on. Comes in right there and I'm just going to tie it, like ground that back down on, right on here and some, I'll clean off some metal and we'll ground it in there somewhere. That'll be good, and uh, it'll be away from where it'll get corroded. Then if I get bored, I'll start working on the uh, that thing there, which is, uh, what do you call that? Fuse box. Here now, I put some gas in the tank, and uh, if you had smell of vision you'd smell gas here, just by the little bit that I spilt here and there. But it seems to be not leaking anywhere. I don't see anything coming out anywhere. Now, we have to hook up these wires and make sure they're connected to stuff and then we'll run a test and see if it's actually going to pump fuel, fuel. Yeah, I think we're set to go here. Put some gas in the tank and uh, Rick's going to hit it in a second here. And go ahead Rick, see what happens. Give it a turn over. <laughs> Okay, turn it off.
Yep, so we had the uh, distributor sitting in the wrong spot, so of course it's not going to run right. That's the marks. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? There's a mark here on the bearing, and then there's a little tiny mark on the shaft right there that's top dead center, number one, ready to fire. So then at that time, the uh, distributor is supposed to point right that way right there and I was off by one turn on the distributor one one gear hey okay, try number umpteen ready to go ready how do you like that yeah hit her again no such thing as a choke in this car turn off the key Try her again and see what happens. Okay. Now, that goes here. Give it a go. Head it again. That's good. Turn it off. I'm happy. Yeah, there we go. It ran. I'm going to unhook the battery for the night. And it's time to go move some snow. My favorite job. Eh? So we have success. A running car. Yay. So here now. The uh, Hey, look at that. The rear end's back into it. New springs. <laughs> Here, new rubbers here, new shock absorbers, new rubbers in here. Rick very nicely painted this stuff up to make it look good. New rubbers in behind here. New rubbers on the same on the other side, springs, blah, blah, blah. Now, to get it in there, I had this tarp strap draped over the top of the car and just held in it would hold it loosely with this and then Rick and I were able to manhandle the rest of the bits in there hardest part being these what do you call control arms here that keep the they try they keep the uh, rear end level this part this bolt here was the hardest one to get in same on the other side so but everything's in there now and it really wasn't that tough I had the rear end for a long time was sitting on that jack right there which is a motorcycle jack and so we rolled it underneath the car to here, lifted it up to the height it's at, and dropped the car down to meet it, put the strap over, and lifted the whole contraption up, and uh, voila, it's done. Just like that. You'd think it was easy, but it wasn't. So there you go. How do you like that? Looks pretty good. Everything looks pretty good. The gas tank's in up there. Rear end's in down here. All the pieces I have to do brake lines on the rear end. This is the uh, what they call in England, they call this the handbrake cable. I call it the emergency brake. And that's it for today. That's about two hours work. We did a bunch of other stuff around moving snow. Yeah, so here I am back at it. The uh, got new shocks absorbers in, new springs in and they seated right looks like it's okay hmm yeah it has to be right i'll wait till they get some weight on that and see how it looks then we'll get some we'll get some weight on it i'll put it down on the uh hmm maybe i'll put it down on a lift just to put some weight on that and just make sure they seat correctly because if they don't seat correctly that's no good yeah, this side looks about the same idea, so I guess it's pretty close to right. I'll get some weight on it and let it seat correctly, and then then that'll be good. Next thing is to uh, hook up this cable across here. It's not in the best of shape, but it's not in the, it, it's still functional. That's a cable for the 
handbrake and tighten up all these bolts. Bolt there, bolt here, bolt, bolt everywhere. Then I think I'm right for the brakes. Yeah, the brakes are here. That's there. I think everything is okay. I need to put new brake lines in it. And I've got a splitter thing here that goes from this part here to this hooks in somewhere about right here. There it is. That comes down to here like that in there. And then I'll run a line out to a splitter and then from the splitter it'll go to uh, either side. I think I hooked the splitter onto here somehow or other. Can't imagine what else that's for. Oh, that's maybe, that's a thing for the emergency brake. Handbrake. Handbrake piece goes there. So, anyway, I'll figure it out. It'll come along. Yeah, so here now we've let the car, Rick's back out here. We've let the car back down off the, uh, on, hmm. New lips here. Let the car down, put weight on it, on these stands underneath. And just to make sure that everything's seated okay with the um, springs. This side looks all right. Everything feels okay. There's no weight on the back lift here. It's all on the car. And on the other side. Same thing, no weight on the lift. And it looks pretty good. It looks like everything's seated just fine. So I think we're okay. That's good. Yeah, now here I am. I've got the uh, the brakes, emergency or handbrake put on there. Oh, there's no propeller shaft. Hmm, perhaps I have to do something about that. And there's this piece right down here. I don't know if you can see that yet. So, cleaned that up and painted it up. So now it has to go on. That's an anti-sway bar or something that goes on in those two holes right there. And then same thing on this side. Those two holes right there. And last night before we finished, I cleaned up the uh, drive shaft and gave it a little bit of a black coat of paint. So we'll put this on today. I wonder which way it goes which. I think that's the front right there. In fact, yeah, I know that's the front right there. So Rick's gone away, went home. I guess he just couldn't take any more of this excitement here. So I'll get back at it here and uh, see if I can get these last few pieces of the drivetrain on. It was great to have help putting up all this stuff because that's a lot easier with two men or two people anyhow. Okay, there you go. Yeah, while I'm down here, I figure I'll... This is the clutch slave cylinder, it's called. And this that's the uh, hose, new hose to go in there. Awful hard getting that thing started in there, but it's, that's how it fits in. Then that goes up. It's a flexible hose and goes up to the top. And that's where you bleed the thing right there. Can you see that? Not very well, eh? Wait a second. See that any better? Yeah, there. So you bleed it right here, and this thing here tightens in. So, hydraulic clutch. Anyhow, and then next on is the propeller shaft or the drive shaft. I'll see if I can get that stuck up in there. I'm going to fix this part of the floor before I put the exhaust system back onto it and then I'll, then I'll put the exhaust system onto it, but I've got to do some more wiring first. Yeah, now here I am. That's pretty simple. This got this bracket here that holds it. I should have painted that, I suppose. It's kind of ugly looking now compared to everything else. So. Anyhow, I put a couple of bolts in here just to hold it. Now I have to just put a couple of bolts in the front side just to hold it. And then I'll get the other two in, tighten them all down. And that'll be that in. Hmm. Easier than it came out because it's uh, all the bolts aren't cinched tight. You can't move them. There you go. Yeah, so there, that's tightened down. Four bolts there, four bolts up in there. Then when you turn this, don't you know that moves? And if you hold this side, the other side will move. Oh yeah, that side is moving anyhow. So there you go. Got a working model here, maybe. Everything's in. Now I just have to do brake lines on here that go from here to there. 
They're there. I'll get them. I think next is uh, I'm going to go back to wiring on the on the uh, above part here. I'm going to go back to wiring up that that uh, whatever you call that thing, that fuse box that I promised I'd put in. There it is here. So I'll start working on it right now. Yeah, there now. I don't know if you have one of these in your uh, shop yet, but I pulled this one out of my kitchen and uh, brought it out here because it's actually quite handy. It's one of those uh, Google things. I'm pretty sure Alexa or any one of them is good, but out here, you give it a, you ask it a question, you say, Hey Google, show me the firing order of a TR7. your answer is in this table and there it is the answers all over the place little things like that are quite handy for in the shop so I'll keep it out here I think I've ordered another one in fact I know I ordered another one for in the house there you go makes things easy so there's the the way they work number one two the pin one pin two pin three pin four pin five pin six pin seven pin eight blah 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 all the way along so I've marked these ones, pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5, pin 6. And then there's room in here I can put a uh, little tag on it. Came with it somewhere. I'll find them and I'll say what they're for and how many amps. Anyhow, that would be good. The um, What I'm going to do, i got to get this off of here now. That's my guide. So anywhere there's, like I'll look on the back of the thing there. Air conditioning and and fan here is blank. One and two are blank. Three and four have a uh, some white wires on there. They're pretty heavy. Fifteen amp. It says it says heated rear screen, but you know there's no rear screen in there. But the wires go somewhere, so they must do something. I'll find out one day soon. But I'll put that wiring in there, and then the battery and auxiliary takes pretty good wires. I've got some black 10 gauge wire here. I don't know if I have any red 10 gauge wire, but I'll use the black 10 gauge wire. Just I'm just going to make a like a uh, pigtail out to here that I can hook the other wires on. So I'll make a pigtail on either side. Take that screw out of there and just solder it in so that it's a, a, a forever thing. And then see where I go from there. Yeah, here I am slowly making progress. The next three. It gets three greens to one to one side and then a big black on the other side here, which will go to a white. I'll put a I'll I'll put some of that heat shrink on all the wires with the right colors so that I know what color they should be. And then we'll just carry on down the road. Not too many more to go. Yeah, there we go. It's all <clears throat> in there and color coded now. So this uh like the black wire here, I've got a blue on it. That's for the purple wires, that's for the brown wire, that's for white wire. That's for red wire, red wire, red wire, red wire. This is blue wire coming on to yellow. Green wire is green, green wire is green. Blue wire, I had to use yellow again. But, <coughs> excuse me, I think that's, that should work. I'll see if I can correlate it with the uh, car side now, with what side gets positive and what side gets, what side is hot wire with the, uh, before the fuse. Yeah, here I am. I'm going through it slowly. You just take one wire, like this is. Here's your. Get this wire up. There you are. Pin 17, right? And then you go and find pin 17 on here, which is. Or which was. Let me see here. Oh, too many hands. Get it right. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, that one right there. And it was a blue wire. So that blue wire goes on to here. 17 goes to that. Now pin number 18 is again a blue wire. That one right here. Can I get my finger pointed at? Maybe? Right, it's that one right there. So I'll cut it off and I'll attach it there. And then I only have a few more pins to go and I'm done. Yeah, yeah, so I was working on the wiring, right? And then Tony comes to the door because he's cold outside. Now he's trying to help me. So there, I think, bleh, there, I think I've got it done. 
there's the new the new fuse box all wired in I'll just check and see if things work hang on a second yeah here I go coming around to the key side so I put in the fuses that matter ones for the uh, fuel pump ones for the ignition ones for the horn and stuff like that uh, the fuel pump works horn works and it starts oh, let me shit. how do you like that so I think I have to do a little bit more work on uh, I was surprised that it even started there and the clock is going round seems to be right that's enough for today I think I've done my day of work time to go and take Tony in the house and get some supper there you are. See you tomorrow, perhaps. I think it's Wednesday today. Hmm, can't really tell for sure. Days just go one to the another. Yeah, yeah, Tony, here I come. Okay, see ya. Yeah, so here you go. Now, this uh, might not work for any of you guys that are married, but I live alone, so I can go and uh, do things like this. All these pieces can go in the dishwasher and uh, see what they come out like. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, coming out of the dishwasher. Got all the dust off it anyhow. Looks like it still needs some cleaning. It's kind of a little bit, little bit crusty, but this stuff here is good to go back in because it's just, I wanted to just get the dust and dirt out of that and grime. That looks pretty good. These are all going to be okay and serviceable. Whatever this piece is, it's... Yeah, it needs to be, that's going to take some work to get that clean. These pieces here, they're nice smooth plastic, they're clean. Hmm, yep. And these two things which are, just keep the flies out of it, out of it, it doesn't work anyhow. And this part here, that's for the inside of the windshield. And so is that one. They're all pretty clean now. Yeah, I guess the dishwasher works okay. That's nice and clean. So, anyway, there you go. All you guys that have wives wouldn't let you do that, but there you go. Yeah, so here we are. It's been through the dishwasher, but you still see that grungy brown on it there. Now, I've done already... This one here, which was grungy brown too, and it's mostly pretty good now. This is the, wait, wait, wait. zoom out here, how do you get out? Out, out, there you are. This is the uh, cover, the door for the glove box, and it's that plastic, plastic stuff. So what I did with that was this fantastic, and what do you call a potato brush? I also did this which was pretty grungy all the way through. Now I haven't got all the edges fixed out yet, but it's mostly pretty good. That was with the same thing, the uh, Fantastic and the potato brush. So I'll do this one here and see if the difference. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It's pretty good now. Most of the dirt's out from all the cracks. This one here too, all the dirt's out from the cracks. So uh, I've got some stuff called uh, Back to black, it's called, it's back to black, it's called, it's for a plastic like this, made by Mother's, and it works pretty good, so you put that on and then buff it off, and it, it'll, it should brighten it up some. It will never be like a factory finish, but it looks pretty good, I'm, I'll be happy with that. Yep, big surprise here today in PEI. It's snowing, what do you think of that, hey? Anyway, I get back out, I was in buying parts, so I'll get back out and uh, get to work. Yeah, so there's my uh, heater, a heat pump in here, right? And so it keeps the place pretty nice and warm, but all that dust that goes through it, I figured I'd go. I've got two, you can see them there. And a big finger, hey? I'll get my little pointer thing out. Wait a second. Where am I? Okay. There's a little pointer thing. So you can see that tape across there at the top there. Anyhow, I got two, I have two 
air filters, which are like uh, car air filters for in the passenger compartment. I don't know what, you know. And they just sort of seem to fit across there. So I just put duct tape on it. And then I'll be able to just vacuum them out and clean them out instead of uh, pulling it apart all the time. And I hope that keeps the dust out of the mechanism a little bit better than because it, I create an awful lot of dust in here sometimes. There now, back to the task at hand. So that mess of wires there is all set up. Now, something I learned, this cap will go on either way, so, hmm, don't you know, you gotta make sure you got, I'll put a marker on one end that will be, you know, I'll be able to tell the difference, but mark it in one way so you know where the, which, which fuse is which, because you turn that top around and you have no idea what fuse is what. Anyway, it's all in there. I'll tape it up and make it look good and see if I can get it hooked on to the, uh, the way it's supposed to be. Or something close to the way it's supposed to be, anyhow. Yeah, there you go. It's all <clears throat> in there now. So I hid this, this big wire goes around in behind stuff and then there's lots of wire up there to hook onto stuff. Hopefully I'll get that stuff out of the way. This wire here should go up in there somehow. That idea to keep out of the way of that other stuff, I hope. Then I'll find out when the dashboard goes back in whether it's any good or not. And well, won't worry about it much until then. Yeah, so I'm back at the carburetors here. And <clears throat> when the pump is running, fuel pump is running, it overflows this a little bit, and then water, then gas will, will come out of here. So I'm thinking, thinking that the uh, float level is not adjusted right, and I've got a little thing here for adjusting the float level, so I'll pull that out and adjust the float level and see what I can come up with to uh, hopefully stop that from leaking. The back end, this hose here is a real pain. I don't know, it shouldn't even be there, it's just too big for the... I, I'll have to... I saw on Henry's, hey, I saw on Henry's that there is a little, by, like the, the hose here on his is just a little one that sort of loops around a small amount, not a great big amount like that. So likely it's a factory made hose with a hoop in it so that it doesn't kink. Anyhow, I'll see what I can do about getting that uh, fixed up one of these days. I'm not quite ready to drain the fluid out of it today. Yeah, just to back up a bit, here's the old the old uh, fuse box that I took out of it. Now, there's a bunch of these little plastic tabs in here. There's a whole bunch of them. There's some of them are broken, and so these then these metal tabs don't fit tight on the uh, on the fuse anymore. And then there's a whole bunch of like there was one spot I don't know where it was, but uh, whatever it was, like this wire here looks a little bit suspect, eh? and a couple of other spots. And one wire just pulled right out when I was going to cut it, so I didn't even have to cut it. I don't know where it came from, maybe right there. So it was not in as good a shape as what it could have been. So it's, it's a new fuse box now, and it actually all looks, you know, presentable. It's not, it's not factory, but that's the way it is. It's got spade fuses in there now instead of those uh, circle things. And the largest fuse that I have in there is a 30 amp. Calls for 50 amp on two of them, but I don't. I, I think I'll get by with 30 amp. See what happens. Anyhow, there we go. Yeah, so I finally got this out of there without completely ruining it. So what I did was I cut off the ends with the Dremel tool so they were flush here. And I have this... Uh, a pointy thing here that you can go I'll show you what it does you center it on where you want to drill a hole and you do that and it makes a little mark I don't know you can see that mark right there it makes that little mark and then you can center the drill on that so if you're very careful and uh, have nerves of steel you can get that thing drilled out it's not perfect but the uh, the pin the new pin It's in. Oh, where am I here? 
and the new pin will go in and that'll hold that float assembly on and I didn't hurt the float assembly in any way I don't think <clears throat> and I'll be able to get a new needle and seat in there that I have then and also adjust it up with that with that adjuster so hopefully that does it I'll check it out see what happens yeah so there's the old one it's actually not the, the needle's not in that oops sorry the needle's not in that bad of shape but this part here wasn't tight and I think fuel was pushing past it so I'll tighten it up in there with the new one and put these there's two of these washers like that so you get one washer then the red washer and then that other washer on there and that seals it and this one here is a spacer to make it so that it will space down 20th of an inch or something well figure it out well here's something encouraging maybe Yeah, it runs for a bit and then it quits. Looks like it's getting oil pressure. Not much, but some. Ignition light stays on and I don't know what that other is. Something else stays on, I don't know what it is. Anyhow, I'll figure it out. Well, cool. That runs for a bit. I'll, uh, it's pretty loud. Sounds good when it's running. And I'm pretty sure I'll get that sorted out eventually. It still does, even though I've adjusted it all, like I said I would, it still drips out of here. Hmm. With uh, maybe I've got too much pressure on that pump back there. Maybe the pump's got too much pressure. I don't know. I, as far as I can tell, I got things adjusted right. And they're both the carburetors are doing the same thing. So, yeah, well, put the door down and see. That's enough. That's enough for today. We'll uh, tackle those other problems tomorrow. Pretty cool that it runs. And uh, I can pull, the way I've got it set up here, I've got this one fuse for the, for the, um, whatever you call that thing, the fuel pump. So I can pull that fuse and have the electricity on without the fuel pump rumbling away. Yeah, so I don't know what those are. Master. Oh. <laughs> Fasten belts. Well, what the hell, eh? And I don't see any belts. Do you see any belts? Not a belt to be seen. Anyway, that's good enough for today. I'll let it be. We'll put it away for the night, and then uh, I'll come back tomorrow and... See what else I can accomplish. I think tomorrow I have to do the brakes in the back there. What day is tomorrow? Friday, Thursday already. My, my, the day go by. Yeah, back to the brake lines now. So I've put this fitting on there, and that's got a three-way on it. Let me see if I can get a picture of that. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. But in there, wait, I'll get some light on it. Hmm. Try this again, shall I? Turn on the light. Okay. There, maybe you can see that, but that's three-way fitting one. This one will go, go to the wheel, this one will go to the wheel, this one will come in from the brake line, which is over here. And I'll run a line to that over there, and then I'll run two lines, one to each wheel. That would be the plan. So the one, first one there is 13 inch. It needs the uh, bubble flare in here, double flare on there and then these ones are double flare there and bubble flare here hmm what do you know eh? yeah here so the first one i'll do is the uh bubble flare so i've got that not i've got that snug but not tight and you pull on what it says is operation zero and that brings it all into drop line there 
Then you tighten down this thing. Good and snug. Then it goes into 3 8 operation 1. And this is bubble flare, so you only do operation 1. Pull the lever. That should be a bubble flare on there. We'll pull it and see what happens here. Whoops, there goes everything. Now, yeah, that's a suitable, that's a suitable bubble flare there. They aren't perfect, but they're pretty good. Now this part here, don't forget to put the fitting on, right? Fell on the ground. So, can't see what I'm doing, but I'm putting the fitting on. There's the fitting, it's all set to go now. Now the other end is a double flare. I'll get set up and I'll show you that. So all you do with double flare, I'll set it up and show you. Over here. You put this around to 4.75, 316 millimeter, 45 degree, it says. Turn your operation to zero. Then you put in the 45 degree side like that. Make sure that you put on your fitting. I wonder, was I pointing anything at anything there? So I've got that to the 45 degree side, right? Oh, I can't do this with two hands. Hang on, I'll set it up and I'll show you. There we're back. So here's the two fittings. Like one, that side there is for the bubble fitting. This side here is for the double flare fitting. So have I got it on there right? Yeah, I've got the 45 degree one in there. So now you pull on operation zero and that just centers everything right. Tighten this down good and that'll flatten out that pipe because there's a little bit of a curve to it. Then you put it on operation one on here. Pull it. That puts in half the flare. And then you put it on operation two on here. And that puts in the other half of the flare. Now you can pull it out of here and we'll see what it looks like. We hope. Oh, where is it? There it is. So there's a decent, decent looking double flare. Now I, do, I have to do a little bit of bending on this tube to get it to go nice. That's a really good looking double flare. So that'll all seal good. And if it doesn't, I'll just make new ones. Anyhow, there we go. We've got that's the small one done. I'll do the other two and I'll show you how it looks at the back. Yeah, there it's all in there now. This goes to here. Then I've got some little plastic things around the, where it hits on the on the frame or on the axle so that it won't rub. Then it goes up into that joint thing right there. And that joint thing comes around to in here. I had some trouble in there. I had to take it apart and do it again, but it seems to be okay now. I guess I'll find out when it leaks or not. And then this side here goes into here. And I put the little bit of plastic on here. So, all seems to be, everything's a, brake-wise, everything is a, okay at the back here. I've got it, it goes from here, like I did this last week or two weeks ago, all the way up to the front, and it seems to be okay. Well, well, I'll find out. Seems to be it doesn't have any fluid in it yet, so when I get some fluid in it, I'll I'll let you know. Anyhow, now on to the next, which might be wheel bearings. Yeah, so the brake uh, brake line making kit, whatever you call that, brake line nuts assortments and stuff like that you know this kit all just folds up into a nice little nice little thing works pretty good lifetime lines lft ltfl-2 yeah so now the question is how do i get those bearing races and stuff out of there hmm well i imagine i can pry out that seal let's see what i have in the new kit make sure i've got all the stuff i need yeah, here it is. So that's the new seal, right? That would be the outside bearing there. 
That would be the inside bearing, I think. Either or. I guess I'll find out as I go along. Let me see this. Oh yeah, this one here, the big one's the out in hmm. Big one goes in the back. Little one goes in the front. So I guess we'll stick it all together and see what happens. Seems that they both come off the race. Alright, and it's got a thing full of grease here, so I'll put that on. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so I used the uh pry bar and Synced it up and that got the seal out of there. So that's the seal out. Then there's, uh, I think I'll just stick my screwdriver in to get that out of there. There's the, uh, the bearing. And then the race has to come out. So I'm going to dig in there and clean that out with the paper towel. And then I'll uh, hmm, see if I can get the uh, slide hammer on there and do something with that. Wait a minute till I get rid of this out of my hands. Where can I put it? Right in this box here. That's where that goes. Greasy stuff. Now where did I put the other bearing? Hmm. I don't know. I lost it. Oh well. Yeah, that only took a couple hours, but I got both those races out of there. Now I'll have to just clean it up a bit. There's one, there's two. I did a bunch of, a bunch of uh, Dremel work on this one here trying to cut it, but as it turned out, I then found a tool that this came with my impact driver set, and it's like a cold chisel with a angle on it, and it could get in, like you see right in there, hmm, I'll turn on the light here, more light, more light, can you see in there, that's, there's only just that little spot right there, and on the other side, a little spot right there to get any sort of purchase on the damn things from above. On the other end, I'll turn it over. The other end, it's a, like easier to get with, you can get that with a cold chisel from the other end, but from this end, it's a real reach in there to get it. So anyhow, this tool reached in and got it. So yay. I'll be able to do the other side more quickly now that I've got a little bit of a method. I put all these, uh, nuts on the wheels so that I wouldn't burr anything while I was working on this. You know how gentle I am. And now it's a matter of just cleaning that out a bit and uh, put the new bearings in. There now I'm uh, all set to press that new bearing race in there I hope. See what happens here. That seems to be going down straight. Better let it pressure off of that for a minute. Let's see if I'm ruining anything. Never know when you're ruining something, Lauren. Yep, you are. Damn. Uh oh. I'll see what I ruined. Hang on. Yeah, there you go. That one's in there now. Yay. I think I'll get a couple of Q-tips and clean some stuff out here. There now, the brake is back on those four bolts. One, two, three, four, hold the brake. It goes on before the uh, bearing, before the wheel hub goes onto the, onto the wheel. And that thing's turning pretty nice. So now what you do is you tighten this in tight so that the wheel won't turn, then back it off so that the wheel turns nice and easy. Roundabout there is good. After it wears in for a while, I'll check it again sometime. But for now, I'm happy with it. Yeah, there I was, talking away at nothing. Now, I did, thought I filmed putting this all together here. Don't know if I did or not. We'll find out later. But there's a little, uh, they put the nut on, and then there's this little holder that goes over the top of that, and a cotter key goes in between, and then this cap here goes on to it. Dust cap. And turns pretty nice. So, gotta like that. Sometime, I think it's around five o'clock, so perhaps I can put the brake on here today, and then that would be this wheel complete. 
and then I'll do the no next one tomorrow. So this gets held on by that bolt up here, this bolt here. Now there's a washer that goes in behind here. See, it's out of hat. Mm, I got the wrench on there. You have to loosen off that other bolt over there so that you can slide that washer up easily. And then this just goes on and set law. I'll tighten them in and then I'll get this thing here hooked in somehow. Yeah, there it is. So that's all reassembled. Doesn't turn so easily now that the brake on it, but that'll get that'll get broken in. Ha <laughs> ha. No pun intended. So now this front end here, new rubbers in here, new lower control ball joint, right? New shock absorbers, new springs, new wheel bearings, new brakes. Well, the old caliper, but new rebuilt brake on this side, new one on the other side, because I broke it. And then anywhere else that needed, this is a new tie rod end. And all these rubbers that go along in the control arm and stuff like that. So yep, yeah, it should be it should be pretty tight on the road, we hope. Anyhow, that's it for it's uh, today is Friday. Hmm. And that's it for this week. Rick was around for a few days, helped out, and uh, thank him very much. Then uh, what did we do? Hmm. Bunch of stuff but I'll think about it. So, hope you enjoy it all, and I'll see you again next week, I hope. Bye for now.